Hey everyone, welcome to Friday Night Live with your host Ben and Rob. The infamous Beho Be Bohemian Grove was infiltrated and there's a video to prove it. A Canadian biotech company unveiled an invisibility cloak. Yes, it's real. And no, I do not own one because you can still see me. And in other news, burglars recently broke into Mr. John Wick himself, Keanu Reeves' home. And what they stole was even more interesting. Hopefully not his dog. And hopefully they didn't kill his dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> in other news, the Pentagon failed its sixth audit in a row. The CIA confirmed the existence of its heart attack gun. And governments have been caught spying on citizens through push notifications of smartphones. Yeah. America. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. So tune in for our Rise.tv exclusive Dig Deep Live Q&A and the top 10 weirder news of the week. So we'll see you guys out on the edge. Oh, that new intro. That new intro is really cool. And by the way, if you're listening to our Edge of Wonder podcast on Spotify, Apple podcast or elsewhere, please leave us a five star rating and review so we can reach even more people. And also remember to like, follow, subscribe on YouTube, Rumble, Ganjing, World, Twitter and Facebook and wherever else you're watching. <laughs> And uh, and oh, by the way, also we're on uh, what is it? Podbeam too. So I always forget. Oh, about that. Podbeam, good old yes. podcasts. Yes. So if you um can't watch our show, you know, on the if you and if you if you have Podbeam, you can find us there. This is true. So you know, to start off the day here, the the night, I should say. How about that BBC anchor that flipped everyone off? Did you all hear about that? I did, but you know what? I haven't seen the whole thing, and it's so funny because like everyone's been talking about it, and I was gonna watch it, and then I, then I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll just wait till Let's wait for the show. Like live reaction from you live know? reaction is is good. <laughs> we'll check this out, Ben. So see, this is their BBC opening here. Yeah, I saw screenshots from it, but I didn't see the full video yet. You so. Got kids, you might want to close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Live from London, this is BBC News. Britain's oh, former oh, Prime Minister oh, Boris Johnson apologised for the back, pain and back. loss. Did anyone catch what she did with her eyebrow? Like her, her right? Oh, her, yeah. Her, her left or right eyebrow? What? <laughs> no, okay, hit play and then watch her eyebrow go up right here. Ready? <laughs> it's like going up slowly. You can just play it, Marco. It's okay. London, this is BBC News. Britain's former yeah, president. Yeah, she's like, she's probably thinking of herself like, oh, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, okay, what do you think happened here, Ben? <laughs> I, I don't know. The thing is, like, who knows if she was, like, actually being serious to whoever she was flicking off. But, you know, <laughs> probably the cameraman, uh, most likely. Like, maybe he said something. And, you know, she got angry at him. The other. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's what I was thinking. Um, I don't. And she didn't really apologize. Correct. She's OK. okay. So she says I was pretending to count down as the director was counting me down from 10 to zero, including the fingers to show the number. So from 10 fingers held up to one, she said in a post when we got to number one, she turned around as a joke and didn't realize she'd be caught on camera. So she, they were counting down and then she was left with one finger instead of your index finger. She did something else. <laughs> so 
I'm just wondering if they knew she was going to do that. And we're like, okay, we're counting down. And then when it gets a two, it's like, oh yeah, we're going to hit the button now. Right. Somebody <laughs> set her up like five, four, three live. And then two, one. And she's still got her middle finger up. Because actually that, that makes the most sense because she's still counting down from one and it's already zero technically because they started. So that's the only thing I can think of. You know, I just have a question. We're talking about an international news station that couldn't be more like serious, I guess you could say. Like they're very like, you know, British people. They're very serious about like, you know what I mean? I, I'm not saying they don't have a sense of humor. I'm just saying with their news, they're very serious. Like, how is this woman not fired? Serious question here. Hmm. Like this was a high, like high stakes game you're playing when you're like, you're flipping someone off right before you go live and then you expect to pull your hand down and just kind of like go straight into a segment. <laughs> High <laughs> risk. Well, the other the other option is, was she actually flicking off the viewers? Too? That's right. <laughs> and then she made this whole story up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Really? It's like this is really actually what she did unintentionally is what every media company, almost without exception, does to us. In reality, they're flipping Probably. us off behind the, right. you know, that is where so it goes true. live. And then they're all serious and proper as soon as it, you know, <laughs> that is so true. I mean, I mean, I have to admit, I mean, like, you know, we're live right now. Right. So during a live show, like really anything could potentially happen. <laughs> at sure. any point in time. But I mean, I mean, that's not something, you know, at least we would do. I mean, granted, there has been like crazy things that have happened during our live shows. But, um, but yeah, I, nothing like that. What'd you say? I said nothing that crazy. No, nothing like that. Right. No, no, definitely. Not. I just don't, I just still don't understand how this woman is getting away with an apology and she's not getting fired. This is the second time it happened though. Not with her, but I mean, um, there were, because we talked about it one time during our show where they were live and remember a woman was like cussing out the cameraman or something like that. She, she was like, she said like, F you or something like that. And it was caught on, it was live when she said it. And then she had to like make this big apology. <laughs> and you know, what's weird is if that happened on Fox news, everyone would be demanding that that person got fired. Probably demanding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean from the other side, like CNN would make articles saying like they should fire their Fox news anchor for yeah. flicking off the camera. And there's like something. zero pressure. Like even the comments are like extremely understandable of this woman. None of them are like fire her off of their think, head. I think most people found it funny anyway. I <laughs> found it funny myself, but it's like, it's still a professional news station. And if Fox news had gotten caught doing it, it would not have been the same reaction. <laughs> Probably not. You're probably right about that. I someone, just don't like double standards. Someone in the chat wrote, well, it's probably technical difficulties. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please excuse our technical difficulties or difficulties working with our news anchors. <laughs> One of the other. Well, Ben, we've got a Bandela effect, right? We do. And this is pretty good, actually. So right. why don't we show this? holiday one <laughs> that was pretty funny all right so yeah we was, we're doing some like for christmas doing some holiday ones so it's a wonderful life and believe it or not there's like two at the same time in this one so the big one is what does the little girl say at the end every time a bell rang an angel gets its wings or an angel gets his wings I was going to say their wings. So what am I like? Uh, Before you play it person now. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Marco, I do have it already timed. In, it's in the, his in wings. The, in, in the, it was his wings. Well, okay. I, I actually remember it as an angel get its, get, gets its wings, but it's actually his wings, which is kind of strange because I mean, you kind of think about angels being mostly, I don't know, women and, and men. So it's kind of strange. Yeah, you're that right. You're right. It's wings. weird. 
Yeah. The other thing is at the end, hold on, before you play this, Marco, the other one is that when it shows the, it shows like the end and then is there a church bell swinging or does it zoom in on the Christmas tree of a bell? I, I've not, I refuse to watch this movie. So really, yeah, Dude, this I, movie I never is watched this movie. really good. Actually, I would I'm highly sure it is, it. but it's one of those things where I'm just like, I'm like, I, look at, look at, think about being in my head. I'm like, it's a wonderful life home alone, right? Like home alone or a Christmas story or die hard. I'm like, every time I'm like, sorry, I see you. Life. I see. I'm not going there. I'm not going to sit down and watch this movie. I've probably seen it a hundred times on TV without watching. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, it's such a great morally. It's such a, it's such an awesome movie. Cause the whole thing is like the guy doesn't want to live anymore. So he's shown a world with, without him in it. Right. And that's like the premise of the movie really, yeah, but okay. I should, I should get what, around. Yeah. Why don't we show this Marco? Okay, this is the first one. So what's strange about this is that a this lot of people familiar. don't remember. Well, it's like now we, we've kind of used to seeing the church bell, but a lot of people remember it zooms in on the Christmas tree behind them and it shows a bell. And then, then it says like, or it shows like that with the end credits. What's weird is that it's even referenced in a Batman show, which will which um which i also have a video of that to show you and then of course we have the second video which is the uh, the ending so i couldn't find one that had both of them together so okay let's play this one yeah she said his there that's right and this one, I don't know. To me, this is weird because this is such a famous phrase about every time an angel or a bell rings, an angel gets its wings, and it's it's referenced a lot. Yeah. And, it is. Um. What's what's even what's like really weird is that Trisha Yearwood and Vince Gill literally have a song called "An Angel Gets Its Wings," but the lyrics to the song says an angel get hit gets his wings. So the song is called it's wings, but the lyrics in the song are his wings. So to me, like, I think that this was, this was, I think this is a legit Mandela effect here, but Marco, can you show this Batman animated uh, TV show? So this is, a, this is from the nineties and there was a one episode called Christmas with the Joker. And this is at the end of the episode. And it's it's subtle and it's kind of quick, but throughout the episode, the, that's pretty much the ending right there. But throughout the episode, they're watching It's a Wonderful Life. And then the ending of the It's a Wonderful Life shows and it shows the bell that would be on the Christmas tree, not the church bell. So you can you can stop it, Marco. There's the Joker. Anyway, I just think this is because, yeah, I, I like other people in the chat were like, yeah, I remember that the camera slowly zooms into the tree and it shows the bell and then it says the end and not just like a random church bell swinging. I swear. Yeah. We're, it's, I feel like. And if you haven't seen I feel the like movie the yet. universe is gaslighting us. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. We're all going crazy. We probably are. Oh, uh, I think we totally are all going crazy. But anyway, yeah, this this was like this was kind of strange. And and I have to give props to my brother on this one. My brother and I were, were talking about different Mandela effects. And he's like, did you know there was one in It's a Wonderful Life? And I was like, dude, no, I didn't actually. So then when I looked into it, I was like, wow, like, I, I don't know. I, I, I it's it's like I didn't see this movie until probably, I don't know, a few years back, because like you said, it's always on. But the funny thing is, I always see the ending of the movie. It's like every time I would turn on the TV, it would always be the ending. So I like really clearly remember the end of the movie. It's either the very beginning of the movie or the very end of the movie. And then finally, one year, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to watch this movie finally. And then I, I just realized my favorite Christmas movie 
is I but I can guess Scrooged. Oh, I thought you were saying Die Hard. No, well, it is like <laughs> Die Hard is my favorite action Christmas movie, but my favorite <laughs> Christmas movie is probably Scrooged. That one's pretty. You mean the one with Bill Murray? Yeah. Yeah, that is actually really good. I, oh, good. I always like that, too. Um, Yeah, I really did like that. There's it's like the character arc in that is excellent. I agree. Great. I agree. And, and Bill Murray I like I like Bill Murray job. movies with character arcs like that and Groundhog Day are both excellent movies. <laughs> yeah, they are. I watched Groundhog Day a couple weeks ago. I was like, man, this movie's so good. <laughs> There's the uh, they, they did a remake with Scrooge, too, and I forget um, who played. Ah, oh, man. Now, now I can't remember which one. There's so many that they did, but one, there was another one that was really good. But yeah. But yeah, Scrooge is pretty good. And um yeah, there's a, there's a couple of good Christmas movies. Um, top of my head, I'm just like drawing a blank, but yeah. All right. All right. Let's see what time is it. Uh, six. Okay. Should we, um, you want to go to a trailer and then we'll start hitting yeah, why don't, our topics? Why don't we do that? Why don't we hit a trailer? And then um, when we get back, we're going to go into the dude that infiltrated Bohemian Grove. London. And uh, so much more. The invisible cloak and the CIA heart attack gun. Can't forget that. Yep. All right. We'll see you for Scrooge has nothing on one Santa who uses his final act to help his tiny Tim. A man catches a glimpse of something greater than himself when he stares in the eyes of a stranger in Grand Central Station. A balloon letter to Santa returns with a miracle attached. A historical truce, the power of righteous thoughts and miraculous escapes from mortal peril leave everyone amazed. Sometimes we have the opportunity to do good things for others, to spread good will toward men and treat every day like it's Christmas. At times like these, I like to think that Santa really does exist. And after our research into inspiring real life Santa stories and sightings, we think you're gonna believe too when you hear what we found. Join Edge of Wonder for Santa Claus stories, good deeds, and Christmas spirit. By the way, you guys, we're having a special um, for the holidays. If you go to Rise TV slash, sorry, rise.tv slash holiday, um, we're having a uh, discount on our um, subscription service for our platform. So please come over and join us because we have so many episodes like you just saw. We just, Rob and I filmed a very special holiday series that's out now um, on top of all the countless series that we have done from pretty much any topic you can think about at this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> like 400 videos, including some documentaries that we made. So, yeah. And this deal only comes around once a year. So, uh, definitely jump on that if you're, you'd like to support what we're doing. Um, I mean, there's over 400 videos on our, on our, uh, rise.tv platform. And it's just an awesome community over there. So, Definitely check that out. If you're thinking about doing something nice for yourself for the holidays, uh, you'll have a load of content to watch <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. So, Ben, did you hear about this guy that broke into Bohemian Grove? I did. But again, I was kind of waiting to watch the whole thing for the show. And uh... so I think we should start off by watching what I think is one of the most important parts of this, which okay, is sure. this yeah. TikTok video, um, Marco, at the top. No one. OK, as far as I know, no one's ever gotten really close to the owl and and showed us any any kind of physical evidence of this thing. And I was shocked when he knocked on it. And then when he went to the back of it, you got to see this. For educational purposes only. And he wanted to capture a glimpse of Moloch the Owl God and Bohemian Shrove, which come to find out is a banned search term on TikTok. This is where elites have been meeting since the 1800s. We're talking anyone from Ronald Reagan to Clint Eastwood. And it comes with wild conspiracies like picking the next president to ritualistic unaliving. He even managed to capture this creepy clip in one of the unlocked rooms. But the footage I'm about to show, to my knowledge, has never been seen. It's an up-close glimpse of the Owl God. Also, I asked him what was the creepiest thing that happened. 
He said, I heard owl noises the whole night, but they sounded like a human imitating an owl. I recommend watching the whole thing on his channel. But what do you think about this conspiracy? Now watch this. Yeah. This is the owl statue. What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I forgot about the F-bomb. <laughs> I, I, I probably would be thinking the same thing now. <laughs> <That's fucking laughs> cool. Watch, watch. Ready? Oh, that's hollow. A bunch of ferns have grown on it. Well, here it comes. Oh, my God. Oh, no you can go, like, behind the owl. I got some owls. Wow. Crazy, huh? That is crazy. It's like you, they could put something in it. Yeah, or like it said he had, they had outlets. You could light the thing up, maybe. Wow. Well, I hesitate to ritualistic unalive. Dude, I mean, that's that's what we hear what they're doing, too. You know, um, a while ago, after Rob and I started Edge and Wonder, there was a fan that reached out to us, and I, for the life of me, I was trying to figure out oh, how yeah. they, they reached out to us, and and I think it was on one of our deleted accounts now, or it could have been through, um, even through the, the webs or through YouTube itself, but they, uh, they were, they work there and they actually provided us with a map and they were, they were, they were explaining their experience of what happened because, um, yeah, they were like, we, we, we like, but it's after like at a certain time, I think it was like 11 or 12, they sent all the workers home. And then it was just the 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 rest of the the group who were who were there, but I remember they said though that it, I think it was a girl and she said that there wasn't anything crazy that she saw and I think we were kind of talking about this kind of recently just that they did bring in like like Asian teenagers like pro I mean they're they're like of age at least eighteen or something and then each one of these guys like would take one and went back to their cabin with one of these Asian guys. <laughs> yeah. And then they were like, they like, like when they all had their big meeting, they would all get naked in there and stuff. And it was all men. And then they just like went out and were like peeing on trees and peeing everywhere. And so they literally had to post signs saying like, do not pee on these trees. <laughs> so, <laughs> so many questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Okay, but, you know, it almost is, like, even weirder to me that this... I don't know why. I don't know why I feel this way. But if the owl was, like, a solid piece of, like, concrete yeah. or something that was, like, a real statue that they erected, I would almost feel like it was less weird than a hollowed-out statue that was built in wood and, like... There's something really weird about that. Like, it, well, like I said, you could put, what are they putting inside of it? What are they putting inside of it? But what's its purpose then? Because then, it's like, it's like a, well, like a performance maybe or something. Well, yeah. And that, you that's know what I mean? what, like, this is like stage. This is like stage art. Yeah. That, well, that's what that that's been the, the whole thing from their defense. Uh, again, you know, they're, they're saying that they're not doing any actual like quote unquote sacrifices. It's just like staged events. Um, but because that, 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 I mean, the whole thing about Moloch or Moloch, whatever, however you want to say it is, a, I mean, it's the God of child sacrifice. I mean, that's literally what the God is of. So, um, so they say they're doing these mock sacrifice sacrifices and they're actually not burning anyone alive. However, we did interview, um, Oh my gosh, her name just totally slipped my mind. Kathy O'Brien. Oh yeah. We've we've interviewed Kathy O'Brien who um was part of this MK Ultra project and she came out in the 90s uh with an FBI agent who rescued her and together they came out with her story and since like 1992 she's been sharing this story now for over 30 years and um so we had her on our show and she, she was saying what she experienced at Bohemian Grove and she was there. So this is, this is our interview here with Kathy O'Brien, but 
some interesting facts uh, about this is that I don't know if you guys are aware, but this club, the Bohemian um, Bohemian Grove Club, started in the 1800s. It was 1870s. So this is a long time ago. Um, it's always been a like quote unquote summer camp for the elite with only males. Males are the only ones that can attend this. And President um, Herbert Hoover once called the um, Bohemian Grove the greatest men's party on earth. I, I think I would um, protest that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, the Asian boy story just doesn't really sound like that to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I would call it the greatest men's party on earth unless you're like for world domination. Then maybe you would say that's the greatest party on earth. But yeah, I mean, and then they start, they literally start off the celebration with a cremation care ritual, which is what you we see with the owl. Now, again, you know, the woman who worked there told us like she didn't see anything like actually anyone get killed or being sacrificed, but they did light it on fire. And that was their whole ritual that they would start um, the celebrations with this owl. And it was supposed to symbolize a freedom from care, whatever the heck that means. And, um, and they, they would literally do this, like, you know, I mean, Alex Jones caught it on video, you know, that was like the famous so, video that came yeah, out. Yeah. I was going to so. say the Alex Jones video gives us so much information. That's like, it does. And actually, um, uh, Marco, the second link in the doc, the full, the full video, the Alex Jones clip is right at the beginning of that. If you want to pull that up, we can just watch it really quick. It's, it's, he just, he goes through, this is him going there, right? And he talks about the Alex Jones video and the, the time that History Channel, a couple of History Channel woods, guys got arrested for going near here. Super private. Oh, meetings. yeah, I do Presidents remember that. have been here. Super powerful people with tons of money. The plan is to infiltrate the site and see what's going on. I want to see the owl statue. We'll see if we can get in. The sun is about to set. I don't really feel comfortable doing this. It's <laughs> I, would think. I think the <laughs> FBI is probably <laughs> involved. CIA, maybe. I mean, these are all rumors. I don't know. But whatever's going on in there, it's, it's creepy. I'm not going to explore too much, but I'm definitely going to try to see that owl statue and where they do some sort of ritual. Oh, so this is the guy that filmed the lake. whole thing? This is the guy. Bar, and there's an owl statue right behind it. That's so fascinating. You know, I didn't know this, but because it's been 1870 since it was created. Yeah, so apparently uh, the History Channel. Oh, yeah. Was, here it is. Watch. Oh, yeah. In the site. Really long time ago, but they did. Who got that? Here got get, go, go, go. Being in jail when you, sucks. When you, uh, I had my mug shot taken. Alex Jones. Wow. Now here is the Alex Jones clip. Snuck into the site really long time ago. He snuck like a camera into the grove. The owl is in his leafy temple. Let all within the grove be reverent before him. <laughs> Lift up your heads, O ye trees, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting spires. For behold, here is Bohemian shrine, and holy are the pillars of this house. There's tons of people there, too. Look at all the people there. Wow. I haven't seen this video in a while, so yeah, that yeah. was the that was the Alex Jones video again. Yeah, that you can saw. turn that off now, Marco. Yeah. You know, um, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Mark Twain and Jack London were both members. I was a little taken back by Mark Twain, Mark but Twain is Jack London, I'm not surprised about Who's it. Who's Jack London? He wrote the the Call of the Wild book. Okay. And um some other books. And then I I mean, he was like the more I started learning about him, the more he was like a big supporter of communism. Really? Yeah. There's like all this weird stuff with mm. with uh revolving around him. And um I was really shocked to read there was like two authors that and then, then what's weird is like these are the books that we read in school, you know. In like middle school and stuff. So yeah. 
I don't know if that was if there's something to that or if it's just like uh you know but yeah it made me really sad to learn about Jack London um mm. but you know I mean again like you got to realize okay this was like the 1800s you know th they may have not been like going all out what they're doing now because of course you have like the Bilderberg group that are basically that's that that's who they are so in the 1800s, you didn't have that. So they could have just been more of like, you know, some elite art, music, drama. It was mostly what they said was mostly literature, art, music, and drama. Like people were in those circles that, that would go to this thing. Um, eventually, somehow it got kind of hijacked by more of the elite po political aspect of it. And, and that's what we got now. Well, what? It's just, I don't know. What is it? You know, I know. Like, it's just weird. My, my, I mean, my, and did you see, did you see when the guy got a clip of in that side, that room, you, you remember that, right? You could see a painting yeah. on the wall and then you could see, you know, on the left side of that room, there was a super creepy statue standing there. Mm -hmm. Did you see that thing? Yeah. Yeah. What that's was true. that thing? I, I don't know. I'm sure there's all kinds of really bizarre things that, that go on in these things. But I, I think that, you know, you have all these like world leaders having meetings and, you know, I guess you could say, quote unquote, how this pressure, even though they're like doing harm, most of them are doing harmful things to us. But I think this is just a time where we're just going to get together and have literally no rules. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I, I really think that's what it comes down to. Whatever they want to do, no one's going to like judge you for anything you want to do no no matter how deprived it is even if you're like you know depraved yeah depraved. totally i'm sorry yes then i mean and that that's what i i think i think it just comes down to that they're just like we're just going to do whatever we want and no one's going to stop us no matter what we want to do and i think it's just this massive week-long party that is probably the most insane thing you would ever see i'm sure for most ordinary people if they were to like view it through a camera the whole thing most people would probably get sick <laughs> oh imagine. yeah seriously oh yeah i can't imagine what would be going on there now we're gonna transition now yeah let's do because that because that guy who snuck into bohemian grove should have called this canadian company to, to, to get one of these invisibility cloaks yeah dude that's what i want to do yeah so that would be the first thing i would do so there's a <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a, a, a lot to talk about here because just a couple of days ago or a week or, or more ago, China unveiled its invisibility cloak. And I don't know if there's any connection here, but I'm sure there is. Um, there is a, a, a YouTube video here of the demonstration of the technology. Marco, maybe you can pull this up for us. Yeah, now check this out, you guys. Yeah, this is insane. I thought this was fake at first. I, I thought this guy yeah. was just doing like a uh, like a spoof on the Chinese thing, and then I realized it was real. That is wild. Doesn't even look like it's that complicated of a technology either. Just like right. Well, that's the scary part. Now, what's also really freaky about this, Ben, is not only does it block anyone from, like, bend the light so that you can't see the person. Right, because that's also, really what it's doing. Right, it also hides heat-sensing cameras. So if you're a heat-sensing camera, the heat-sensing camera can't see you if this cloak is over you. You know what the scariest part of this is, is if this is what is coming to the public and we're having this and I can't even imagine what the military has been using over the last like 20, 30 years. Not only that, but check this out. <laughs> if China was unveiled this thing, which we have a video of that, Marco can pull this up. Who did they steal it from? Because well, they're, they're yeah. so that's what they do is they steal the yeah. intellectual property from corporations or the government and then they make their own technology. Right. So this was the unveiling of the Chinese tech here. This is not CGI.
China has just created the most terrifying war weapon that we do not have protection from. A physicist named Chu just announced during a terrifying presentation that an invisibility cloak is now a real thing, with experts saying that they plan on not only having this being used on people, but weapons with the next generation of combat yeah. weapons going under trial with this technology. Not only can it hide any object and person behind it, it is also believed to be able to hide a person through heat sensing cameras. With a lot of high security areas using heat sensors, this could be a real threat allowing anyone to get past the nation's highest security. At the presentation, Chu had two workers hold a panel in front of him and when they rotated- now Watch this. Chu turned completely invisible. Boom. With Chu stating a haunting phrase, science fiction has now become real. The panel uses light bending technology to hide the person directly behind it, revealing just Boom. the background. Named Quantum Stealth, many fear it going into the wrong hands and into those who may do terrible things with it. And with even the people who it's created it great. not having a solution on how to combat this, it could be very dangerous. You know, there, so Thank there's you. a video and um, I've always, you know, on great on the YouTube days when before the censorship, you could find so much stuff. Now this video is really hard to, to, to find, but it was during Iraq. It was one of the wars and there, there was a tank, an Iraqi tank. And you could see this like thing moving that literally looked like something from like predator, you know, the cloaked predator. And this, he, this thing jumps on the tank, opens it up and basically attacks everybody inside of the tank and gets inside of it and takes control. And so then this he's is like super soldier slash predator. Yeah. 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 And then the whole thing is, was like, this is American soldier using this technology. And this was during there, during the like early two thousands already, or like, you know, yeah. Cause it was after nine 11. So somewhere around there, and so we, it seems like we already had this technology and this, this was like, this video made rounds all over. A lot of sites were talking about it and then it, it's just gotten taken down. It's been really, really hard to find. I, I think I found a while ago, I found like a super low res quality of it on YouTube, but, um, but it, it's, it's a very like, I mean, it looks real. It really does. Um, it looks like it was being recorded live when this whole thing was happening and it really looks legit. And to me, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I mean, highly doubt that they don't have this thing ability right. already. You know, it just seems at this point. Yeah. And like, once they start declassifying things, you know, it's just, someone was asking me recently, like, like, why do you think the, the CIA would declassify things? And I think, well, eventually things are declassified because, they have way far more advanced stuff than what they're doing. And it's kind of like they declassify it thinking like, Oh, this is the end of it. You know, like we're going to get into this heart attack gun. Well, the, I mean, you know, and it's like, what is this thing? And why would the CIA de um, declassify it? But then you start thinking like, man, if this is declassified, then what the heck are they using right now? You know, what, what kind of weapons do they have? What kind of technology, and it's probably things that are almost like beyond our imagination, except for like science fiction. And that, I mean, that quote that at the end there that, you know, science fiction becomes reality or whatever that was. I mean, that, that's like, like really, when you think about it, it's, it is scary because yeah. I mean, yeah, into the wrong hands, like what there's, there's no ending of what this could, who could use this technology and what for. But I mean, like someone like you and me, like <laughs> my, my, the first place I would like to go to is uh, underneath the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have ways of finding you under there. I'm so sure they, they do. Cloak. I'm sure they have like anti cloaking technology, you know, but I mean, th this is like, yeah, if this is coming to the public, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm sure they have some kind of like Harry Potter kind of cloak. And uh, yeah, crazy. I yeah if i wish i could try to find that video you guys but it's just like so hard to find but if you can type in like cloaking military tank or something like that you know you may be able to find it somewhere if you're kind of looking pretty hard for it but um yeah this is really crazy technology though hmm. it's just insane it's crazy how it shows the background but the the um 
yeah for, you know you you like you, if you're standing right behind it you disappear but it's showing in the background so that's just it's kind yeah, of it's James Bond stuff it's what it is it really is it's weird yeah yeah which then leads into our heart attack gun um yeah. it's so this you is so you can't hide with an invisibility cloak you know from a heart attack gun no you definitely can't um uh, yeah, this is crazy. This whole thing with the, but actually, Marco, you know what? Before we get into this, I realize we need to play another trailer. So why don't we show a true? This is a perfect time for a trailer, and then we'll dive right into. It. <laughs> Dude, that Sorry. heart attack gun had a scope on it. Okay, trailer gives gun. you a heart attack, man. <laughs> a heart patient, another dimension, and rap sensation Kid Cudi combine in a miraculous story. An unseen helping hand alerts a woman right before a dangerous near-death experience. Unexplainable winter survival stories see more than one woman frozen solid and then return from the edge of the grave. An eating disorder recovery, a near-death experience, and an impossible sign from heaven change a skeptic's heart. Miracles, amazing supernatural events, astonishing brushes with death. They were said to be just stories. But these real life experiences prove there's more to this world than meets the eye. Wanna feel hope and Christmas cheer? Join Edge of Wonder for Christmas miracles and near death experiences. All right, time for a heart attack. Time for a heart attack. So, um, I this is this kind of came out a while ago, but the interesting thing is all these all this media started writing about it today, actually. Mm. <laughs> so it started circulating back in the in the news, and um, so heart attack gun and the bizarre story behind it. So the premise was that they were looking for a way to kill somebody without le or po I should say poison somebody without leaving any kind of trace. So they made this thing from sh uh, shellfish toxin that could enter in someone's bloodstream and kill them and within mere minutes without leaving a trace. Frozen and shellfish toxin. Yeah, I don't even really. No, like so it's a dart gun basically. It's basically a dart gun. And the thing is, this was declassified in 1975. Mm. Which again, like it's just mind boggling. I mean, now now I, you know, we're hearing all kinds of stories that it's not just like a dart gun with poison in it. I mean, they could literally just aim Okay, quick, quick question. Somebody. Sorry. Yeah. Ser serious question. Why does the guy on the right here look like a grown baby? <laughs> who is that guy i think he's someone i don't uh, know frank church left and doesn't say who the guy on the right doesn't is. say the other guy is that's funny he looks like a uh one of those he looks like an actor in like a tv made horror ben, if i ever come show. to work if i ever come to the show with that haircut i want you to shoot me with a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> I'll shoot you with the uh, with our Nerf what gun. What the heck does he have in his hair to make it that slick? Is that like bear grease or something? I don't know, man. It's coming out of the seven or it's in the seventies. Straight up, Crisco. He's probably still living in the fifties there, but um, that's so weird. So th this was revealed right after the Watergate scandal, which is like a whole other thing. And and the rumor is that actually they, they were kind of threatening this with, uh, I mean, this is again, just rumor threatening this with, um, Nixon, which is why they, they basically gave him an ultimatum. Like you can either get the gun or go out on your own. But, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. So actually, um, can you play this YouTube video? Marco, this 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 really breaks things down and gets really freaking weird. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let's see. So there there is a video, and this is again from this is actually from this 1975 hearing, and this is like I think it's in the 80s that this woman is talking about what this thing actually is. 
Uh, also, I had to find one time they wanted me to find um, to find out if there was such a thing as um, as a poison that was undetectable, especially one that seemed to uh, mimic a heart attack that would kill someone, but it would it appear that they had a heart attack. I did find such a thing. Does this pistol uh, fire the dark? Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman. And a special one was developed, which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. The, the poison was frozen into some sort of dart, and then it was shot at uh, very high speed into the person. So at, when it reached the person, it would melt inside them, and the only thing would be like one little tiny red dot on their body, which was hard to detect. There wouldn't be a needle left or anything like that in the person. But also the toxin itself would not appear in the autopsy? Yes, so that uh, there was no, no way of perceiving that the, uh, the target was him. That guy's like, look, guys, this gun's cool. <laughs> oh, man. Well, so, you know, according to a lot of like, like Bill Cooper and um, – some other people that were that worked on reverse engineering technology and stuff that came forward. What'd you say? Death ray gun. Yeah, that that was kind of what they moved to. It was like, okay, this got declassified because it was clumsy, and it, they had to use like you know obviously poison toxins and things like that. I mean, imagine a gun they could just point at you, and it just created like some kind of energy wave that hit you, and then it would just cause a heart attack. And that seemed to be why this was declassified and then everyone made a big deal about this and it's like oh we're not going to use this anymore you know okay you're right like this is inhumane and this is kind of crazy so we're gonna like push this aside that's why we're we're, we're we're unveiling it and we're sorry blah 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 and then it's like okay get the uh, death ray out <laughs> it's like that and then it's like with that thing then you would have no traces of anything and um uh that that's supposedly some of the rumors what they've used and then it's really and it's it gets so weird when you start thinking about like some of political people who have died and, and, and you know even like with a heart attack which has happened and then you start wondering okay was this like an assassination using these like crazy weapons or was this just an actual heart attack and like a big one is the guy who um the, one of the most controversial deaths related to heart attacks was the guy who um, founded um, um, uh, Breitbart Media. Oh, yeah. Andrew Breitbart. Breitbart. Yeah. Mm. That has definitely been one of the most controversial deaths in more recent times related to he had a heart attack and a lot of people always suspected foul play on that one. So. You, know, you know why I'm not head of the CIA? I mean, aside from me not being completely evil and everything. <laughs> it's because if I was a head of the CIA, I would ask them to develop a break dancing ray. <laughs> you know, you're in public and you just need to oh. mix things up. You know, you, you just need to kind of like stop the flow of traffic and just get everybody to look somewhere. And you hit someone with the break dancing ray and they just start breaking it down in front of everybody in public. <laughs> automatically like they know how to break dance and they're just it'd be awesome that would be cool <laughs> that's why i'm not head of the cia uh that's hilarious yeah probably me too i would probably ask for a lightsaber <laughs> yeah <laughs> like maybe a lightsaber ray that lightsaber, lightsaber ray. but doubles as a ray you know yeah that would be cool that would be cool i'm sure they already have that anyway I wouldn't be surprised that I, I mean, they're they, what they spent like a hundred thousand dollars trying to figure out whether Stana, the Thanos snap could could be legit. So I, I, I can't imagine that, you know, with all the money that's missing, which right. we'll, we'll actually we're going to kind of briefly touch on with the Pentagon and a little bit later. It's like, I, yeah, OK, maybe well, some dude, of that let's money. Let's get into that now. Let's get into okay, that. Why don't we, yeah, why don't we do that? And then we'll talk about Keanu and then we'll come back up if we want to cover anything else. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, let's do that. So the so, Pentagon failed the sixth audit in a row. Okay, so the Pentagon six years in a row. Yeah, it's annual audit for the sixth year in a row, according to the Defense Department's chief financial officer. 
So out of 29 individual sub audits of the department, only seven passed this year, the same as the year prior. Comptroller <laughs> Mike McCord told reporters Wednesday, federal law since the early 1990s requires mandatory audits for all government agencies. The Pentagon didn't begin auditing itself until 2018 and has only had incremental improvement yearly. <laughs> So this I think time the IRS around, needs to investigate the Pentagon. <laughs> right. Well, let's listen to this, you guys. Listen to this. This time around, 1,600 auditors combed through the DOD's $3.8 trillion in assets and $4 trillion in liabilities, conducting some 700 site visits. They found that half of the DOD's assets can't be accounted for. <laughs> <laughs> It's all, it's all somewhere in space. <laughs> it's like all of those assets are this whole colony on Mars, like 3.8 trillion, and two trillion are missing. <laughs> and, and the worst part is, this has happened every six years. Six years in a row, there's been trillions of dollars that they just can't account for. And it's it's like, it doesn't funny, matter. But not funny. Like there's no no accountability at all. It's like, oh yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sure it's somewhere here. <laughs> oh man, it probably is on Mars. <laughs> and seriously, it's like, how do you lose two trillion in assets? Like. <laughs> But uh, maybe they really are building lights. And you know, the best thing is like they don't even care. They're just like, yeah, what are you gonna do? Shut us down? We're the Department <laughs> of Defense. What do you like? <laughs> oh no, I've been audited. Now I can't make that heart ray heart attack gun this year. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's probably exactly what's happening. Dude, I I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's really freaking funny, but at the same time, it's just really sad because like, I, 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 I can't even, I, I wonder how much money that's been through the Pentagon since like, w w w like the fifties are unaccounted for. <laughs> and it's only the last six years they've been audited. All yeah, the previous what, years. That's what, that's what. Oh my gosh. I mean, grant okay, granted, they do use a lot of like, you know, subcontracting companies uh, so they don't have to put anything on the books, but still, I mean, this is like like we're talking about trillions of I mean, this this is this is mind blowing. Like this is mind boggling. Yeah, not, like billions, like trillions is so much more than billions. Yeah. <laughs> and billions <laughs> is so much. <laughs> I, I don't I, I don't even I, I seriously don't even know what to think about this. I just wish there was more pressure on on the Pentagon, but what do you what, what can you say, you know, at this point? What can you say? Yeah. What can you say? What can you do? Not much. Not much. <laughs> it's not it's not gonna materialize the two trillion dollars in assets <laughs> that's missing. Well, it's not it's not necessarily the money that it is missing as it is like, OK, what did you use this money for? And then it's like trying to figure out the assets that they have. And can but you it, but can you imagine yeah. that? Like we're talking yeah. about like it could even be like tankers, airplanes, like Everything. it would have to equate like a, a two trillion in assets. <clears throat> it's just missing. It's like, what is it? Underground bases? Is it in well, the ocean? I mean, that, that's the question, right? I mean, you look at the Denver airport, it costs $4 billion to build. But, um, you know, and everyone's wondering why the heck did an airport cost $4 billion? You know, so if there are more, these. More. Yeah, they, they kept adding to it. Yeah, that's true, actually. And it was like way longer than we expected. So, yeah, I mean, are, did they build a base on the moon? I mean, with that much money missing or unaccounted for, um, yeah, maybe they actually maybe there is, maybe it is on Mars. <sighs> wow, <clears throat> yeah, Denver Airport approves project with one billion cost overrun. This is yeah, I mean, 
it doesn't even make any sense. I mean, you just had the uh, JFK or uh, not JFK LaGuardia in New York City just remodeled their airport and it wasn't even like near this much money. So, right. What is going on to this? At least two point. Okay. The final price tag for the great hall. And that's just, that's just the hall. I, that's not, I don't know if that's the whole airport, but at least 2.35 billion before any additional cost overruns will be at least three times higher than originally budgeted. <clears throat> so they're adding on to it now. They're still adding on to the Denver airport. That's what it says. Even in uh, 2028, they don't expect it to be finished. Yeah, because what? they're not they're not adding on. They're digging down. Yeah, maybe. Well, there are tunnels around there. That's what it is, man. Yeah, I'm sure it is. It's just so weird. Why? Why important? Well, because so because that's the escape route. That's where everyone goes when when Armageddon hits. Is <clears> there's like trains, probably even from the Pentagon, that go straight there. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that's what we've heard. And actually, there was a uh, somebody that we, <clears throat> the guy that we interviewed for our um, Freemason series, the Freemason Insider. He was one of the people that said that yeah, he's like everybody knows like when when he came to the meeting he said everyone was just talking about the underground tunnels and the fast train systems that yeah. they have on the ground like it's just normal it's just like yeah but we all know about it you know and it goes like 800 miles an hour so you could travel from like you know new york to la in a, just a couple of hours and that was it yeah so yeah this is our video that we have that we we were we interviewed him Yes. So, yeah, so insane. Well, um, you know, speaking of uh, defense, um, you know, objects. I don't know what to say here. We got to talk about Keanu Reeves. What the heck? Oh happened? yeah, yeah. We we're gonna talk about that, and then we 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 we're gonna touch on the government spying on Apple as well. Okay, we'll hit that. Or not after. Apple government spying on us yeah through apple so why don't we touch on that first then we'll get into keanu reeves yeah sure we can do that since we're still talking about like weird government stuff so um a report came out from reuters just the other day saying government spying on apple google users through push notifications so basically well this this article starts out unidentified governments are unidentified governments <laughs> That's how the article starts out. I I'm sure they're already identified, but anyway, the governments are surveilling smartphone users via their push app notifications. So uh, this is through a senior U.S. official. Or I'm sorry, a U.S. senator. Um, that's what uh, Senator Ron w Waden is saying. This is claiming this, and. Um, Apps of all kinds rely on push notifications to alert smartphone users um, from like breaking news and other updates. What users often do not realize is that almost all such notifications travel over Google and Amazon servers. So this guy Waden asked the Department of Justice to repel or modify any policies that hindered public discussions of, public, of push notification spying. So in a statement, it said that Apple said that, that his letter gave them the opening they needed to share more details with the public about how governments monitored push notifications. Mm. So the thing is that they probably already knew this. So once this went public, they're like, they're kind of, I feel like they kind of played dumb. Like, oh, we're sorry. We didn't know this. So we're going to like monitor this a little bit more and try to like, solve this or fix this meanwhile it's like you know i just feel like all your apps are like all the, of them yeah like the facebook app you know it's already connected to every single app that you have on your phone and so anything you do through your camera through typing through other apps it's all being recorded and monitored anyway and that's the big thing that everyone's complaining about tiktok too so it's like i think they're all doing it honestly right <clears throat> But I don't know. So moral of the story, I guess, you really don't want anyone to know what you're doing. Don't have a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's easy. 
<laughs> in today's age, I don't even know. Um, guess we can all get flip phones again. I do miss flip phones. Flip, phone, flip phones were really cool. I mean, think about those. You remember when we watched The Matrix the first time and they had those phones where it was like, Whoosh. yeah, everyone, everyone was like, those are so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I know. They were. 1999. Speaking, yeah. Speaking of Matrix, do you want to get into the Keanu Reeves story? <laughs> yes. So masked burglars steal gun from Keanu Reeves home. This is crazy. Masked burglars broke into Keanu Reeves Hollywood Hills home and fled with a firearm, according to a report Friday. The Los Angeles Police Department first responded to an anonymous call about a possible trespasser at the Matrix Stars property around 7 p.m. Why are they still calling him the Matrix Star? Yeah, I and would think they would know. say John Wick. It's like, <laughs> take your pick from different movies, but John Wick seems to be way, way more influential than the matrix you know well right now at least yes at least yeah yeah okay when wednesday uh is when this happened but they found no one there so the law enforcement sources told this to tmz officers headed back around five hours later when an alarm started blaring at 1 a.m thursday the outlet said so at that time police spotted multiple men in ski masks on security ma cameras smashing a window and entering the star's home estimated to be worth around $7 million. Police said the suspects took one firearm from the home before fleeing, the report said. One firearm. Yeah. And then just why this is like random. John Lennon shot and killed 43 years ago today. <laughs> <laughs> that is and true. That has nothing to do with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they maybe they they stole his gun, traveled back in time and then uh, shot John it? Lennon. Yeah, with shot, the guy that shot John. Lennon. <laughs> That's it. We figured it out. Man. Right. Wow. Um, so is this his house? I guess that's his house. Yeah. Roll down, Marco. You know, okay. um, it's interesting because out of all the all the, all the Hollywood stars that, that I mean, you know, seven million dollars is is quite expensive home, but I know his home is not nearly as big as most stars in Hollywood. Um, like he he could potentially have like a way bigger massive house, and He's and he does more actually. humble, right? Yeah, he is from what everyone says and what we've heard. And, um, but I, this is really weird to me though, because I, I don't know. I mean, he's like Keanu Reeves, John wick. You'd think you would have like security up the wazoo. So how in the world did these guys well, get I mean, through this? He does and, have security. Yeah. <clears throat> like, you know, the police did go and everything, but it takes time to react to, you know, guys breaking in they're in ski masks who knows if they can if there's anything that they can track to find out where these guys came from you know yeah but and like they they specifically stole this gun that's the other i mean i i would one thing i can honestly say it's really cool that we we're, we're talking about a celebrity that owns guns that were <laughs> Oh, it's Keanu Reeves, dude. The guy is John Wick. Like he practices with guns all the time. He's got yeah, to have I know. Gun I It's like that's what's so weird. I mean, why they stole the single gun? I I would be I would really love to know what kind of gun it was. It was probably like something a little bit more rare, and I can imagine it's probably worth a lot of money. It's well, it is thing. now. Yeah, They're gonna sell it somewhere now. and be like, we got Keanu Reeves' gun. <laughs> No. So we actually in our chat we have Keanu Reeves. That that's the name. He actually that guy called himself Keanu Reeves for a long time in our chat. He that's says right. he said John Wick is the security. <laughs> it's like John Wick doesn't need security. He is the security. Right. Like that is true. That is a good point. But anyway, it's just this is just mind boggling mind boggling still like Keanu Reeves' home got broken into in Hollywood. It's weird. It is weird. You don't really hear about too many stars' homes getting broken into. Although it really kind of depends too. Um, some of them are in gated communities and some of them are not. So I think it, that that probably could play a factor into it as well. Right. So. 
All right. Well, we had some stuff that we didn't get into, but we could we could save that for Tuesday. Save it for Tuesday or for uh, or for Friday, even or next, next week. Friday. Some of it is pretty green. It's very very interesting stuff. Yeah, like the Sumerian text. We'll we'll, we'll save that one for next time. There he is. There's, there's the Matrix the, phone. The Matrix phone on the left there. Which one is the one on the right? Or I guess they both are. They're just different color versions of it. Dude, well, everybody wanted that wanted that phone when it came out, and it got obsolete. It became obsolete very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all phones became obsolete very quickly during that time. True, because you know, remember it was like iPods came out, and then you know, um, things just started rapidly going towards an iPhone. Well, first it was the BlackBerry. That's well. Yeah. Before the iPhone, it was like the black and the Blackberry is what changed everything. Everything kind of became obsolete after the Blackberry dropped. And then the iPhone changed everything. Mm -hmm. But technically, Samsung had the first um, uh, touchscreen phone. And then there was a big thing about that, how Apple stole the technology and stuff. But yeah, that's baloney. Who knows? It's, but it's also doubtful. It's like they would be developing that at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. That's wow. true. All right. Well, anyway. All right. We're going we're gonna to get into a live Q&A with everyone here um, in, a, in just a minute. But before we go over to Rise.TV, I kind of wanted to just let everyone know that we have our very uh, timely holiday special going on right now rise.tv forward slash holiday go there and you can get rise tv for a year for only seven dollars a month which is a huge deal um and you know it comes with so many videos an awesome community you'd be supporting our work and allowing us to do this um you know for another year which is really important for us and um we can't do it without you guys so if you could please help us we'd really appreciate it um you know it's been really hard since uh our channel was deleted off of youtube you know what we're talking about so if you could uh if you could help we'd really appreciate it and uh it would do so much for us so and besides that we've got so many videos that we've made um especially for christmas time you're going to be getting like all kinds of new stuff just on rise tv exclusive content just for you and then also all of the 400 500 videos that we've that we've made over time that you guys are going to have access to so um please think about uh supporting us we'd really appreciate it and uh, we'll see you over there for our live q a ben did you have anything else to add nope and then we also have our top 10 weirder news of the week of course and uh, we have some really awesome ones today for you guys so all right we'll see you over there the tv is biased and chaotic the movies are cliche and boring the matrix is taking over where can I find some good entertainment, for goodness sake? Well, look no further. Get our streaming platform, Rise.